Hello, my name is Jay Bear, and welcome back. This is episode 26 of my survival series, and I'm standing here in my little temporary base by the stronghold that I found and went into the end, and I got an elytra and picked up some shulker shells, and I was just preparing to head back over to my base. And I was packing stuff up and I'm thinking, oh, what should I leave behind here that I really don't need to take back to my base that I can just leave out here and trying to figure out, okay, well, let's see, let me empty my ender chest out. Let me get the dirt out, get the ender pearls out, all these different things. Let's try to think, okay, I only want to make one trip. And then I just realized I can make shulker boxes because I do have Let's see, I have uh, chests, I have wood. I can take everything back with me if I want to. Not that I'm going to, there's no reason to take all of this stuff back, but I can take the majority of it back. Silly me, went to the end to get shulker shells so I can make shulker boxes and I'm not even making them. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get stuff packed up here and work on heading back over to my base. All right, so I've got everything packed up that I wanted to bring with me, and Jake and I are heading back to the base. And I'm gonna go back there, and I'm gonna get all of this stuff unloaded. And then we're gonna start working on a sugarcane farm because I wanna have rockets. Am I going the right way? Yeah, this way. I wanna start, uh, well, a sugarcane farm and a creeper farm. Those are the two things that I hope to work on in this episode because those are the two things that we need in order to make rockets. I now have an elytra, so I might as well take full advantage of it and make myself some rockets and be able to travel out, travel around quickly. It'll be a lot faster than running around on a donkey. No offense, Jake, but it'd be a lot faster to fly around. And so that is what I am hoping to accomplish in this episode once we get back and put all the stuff away that we have with in our inventory. It's a flower field here. You know, I should come up here and make a, a flower farm because it'd be nice to have all of the different colored dyes and have as many of them as I possibly ever could want. Maybe someday I'll do that. All right, so I have made it back to my base safely and I have put away all of the things that I brought with me, except for a couple items. As you can see on my hot bar, I am still holding the dragon egg and the dragon head. And I was thinking that this should be kind of a trophy that I put up. So I was thinking the dragon head, we put it right up there. And so I do kind of hang out in this area quite a bit. So that's why I thought this would be a good place to put it. And so we're going to put a purple slab here and we'll put the dragon egg right there on a shelf. And I was gonna put an end rod here too, just because it is all end stuff. Maybe if I get some more and just put a line of them across, let me do that. There we go. That works. I'm happy with that. It'd be nice if we could somehow turn off this little piece on the, the end rods that are in the middle, if there was some way to, to get rid of that. But unfortunately, there's not. But that's okay. So there we go. Dragon head and dragon egg. My trophies from the end, as well as my elytra. So the next thing we're going to do is start working on a creeper farm and a sugarcane farm. And the sugarcane farm is what I think I'm going to do first because I do think that's going to be the easier option. But where do I want to put that? One thing I did consider was maybe making part of the kelp farm into the sugarcane farm, but I think it would be a lot too way too much effort to take away all of that kelp and water. Yeah, that, that would be a little too difficult. So I think I'm just gonna have to make another flying machine farm. And we're kind of out of room right over here, unless I go back there, let's go around. All right, so maybe this is the place to put it, is right here 
behind the kelp farm, we could put a sugarcane farm right back in this area here. I think that's a good place to put it. So that's what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on clearing this area out and get a sugarcane farm built up. So as you can see, I've got a little bit quicker way of putting things away. Actually, it's not that fast because it takes a little while for hoppers to unload shulker boxes, but it is a little bit more automated than me just throwing stuff into the chest or walking around and putting things away manually. But one thing I'm gonna build eventually is a shulker unloader that I can just take shulker boxes yeah, it's putting away stone right now. That's why that's happening. Anyway, uh, that I can just take and put the shulker boxes in a chest and have them automatically unloaded. That's something I want to do eventually, but not right now. And I did make a redstone shulker box because one thing I've always found when working on anything that requires redstone is I just keep coming down here to get things. And I don't have a whole lot in this right now. I will add to this, and I know some of this stuff isn't really redstone stuff, but it is stuff that I use a lot. So that's something I will probably carry around with me all the time while working on projects. But let's go ahead and go over here to the sugarcane farm. It is now functioning. All right, so here it is. And let's go ahead and come up here and take a look at it. So you, of course, have to have a water source next to every piece of sugar cane. So what I did is I just took and put water all around the outside of it in slab form. Oh, almost nighttime. I have to sleep soon. And that way I could have sugar cane all the way around on the outside. But then in order to fill out the inside, I had to place the, the water in pattern like this. I did miss some points like if I want sugarcane right there where that torch is, then I'd have to make this one water. So I either get one here or I get one here. What difference does it make, right? And I figured, well, you know, I could light this thing up by putting some torches down. I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep here. I think I got a bed. Yes. So the way this works is once a day at noon. Well, not quite noon. It's before noon. It's when this redstone line from the daylight sensor reaches all the way. You can see right here, it's only powered to this point. Now it just moved to here. Once it reaches over here, it will send the flying machine off to the other end, and then it will immediately turn around and come back down to this end. 
and then it will go off once more later in the day when this redstone turns off and retracts this piston. So I will show you that once the sun gets to, oh, about right here. All right, and there it goes. Knocking down any sugarcane higher than one tall. And it comes down here. And it turns around and it goes back. And then underneath, there's a hopper minecart running back and forth. And we can see that it's picking up all of the sugarcane here. Should see it get picked up right there. Here we go. So if we come down here and take a look, we can see it underneath here. One problem I had with this is at the ends, it was bouncing the sugarcane out onto the ground. And so I did make a little change to it and made a little catch chamber for that, that the minecart will pick up. And then it takes it all down here and unloads it into all of these hoppers. It goes underground into a dispenser or not a dispenser, a, uh, a dropper. And it will shoot it out into a water stream and send it over into my storage system. I had tried to make a hopper unloader like I have for the melon and pumpkin farm. And I built it the same way I had it built over there, but I just could not get it to work right. I don't know what was wrong, but it just would not work for me. So it goes down underground, underwater, into the water stream that I have under the ground right here. And it flows right through here, through that into my storage system. And if we go and take a look over here, we see we've got sugarcane flowing in. So that takes care of the sugarcane farm. I don't know if it's going to be big enough or not. We'll find out in, as we... Uh, start making rockets. I had intended to also build a creeper farm, but one thing I realized with that is I'm gonna have to dig out a really, really big hole to make a creeper farm or put it up in the air or something. I'm gonna have to figure that one out, but I'm not gonna have time in this episode to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do some miscellaneous cleanup work. Yeah, you know, like right here, this road, this now needs to be extended down to here to get over to the sugarcane farm. Right here, I've found that I have, and there we go, we can see the flying machine now running again a second time because the sun is over there and the piston just turned off. And so it retracts that block and sets the observer off again. But anyway, like right here, I have this spot where I'd really like to be able to make it down over to that area there from here someplace. So I'm thinking I'm going to put some type of road that goes out over top of the kelp farm and it ties in over there someplace. I have this area here with all these horses just stuck down here. I need to put something here to get down to that area. Over here, I've wanted a road that kind of wraps around this way and gets me over to this side of my base. I've got this opening here with this hole that I can just fall into. I've got this, all this minecart track still just sitting around. I've got boxes sitting around. Um, I've got this exposed area for the villager trading hall. So there's just various little things of cleanup work to do like that that I'm gonna to try to take care of because it's what I have time for in this episode. So I think I'm going to get started over here in this area first. All right, so I got these areas completed that I was talking about earlier. So I put in, well, I kind of extended this road down over here to the sugarcane farm. And I also put glass around the outside down here, just so that in case spiders happen to wander in here, they don't go inside and stop the minecart. I had that happen 
one time with my melon and pumpkin farm back when I first built it. And so I made sure to put glass around it. But that was also before I had the entire area lit up. So I probably probably will not have that problem in the future. And then I took and put a little road over here. And one thing I like about this is when the flying machine is harvesting the kelp, you can come out here and you can watch it harvest it all. And it connects over to right here to this area. So now we have a quick, easy way to get around some supports here, holding it up. I couldn't do anything to support it over top of the water because it would interfere with the kelp farm, but it is what it is. At least I've got an easy way to get around. And then over here, I put a path that comes down this way, down to the horses, and it just stops here for now. Eventually I will do more over in that area, but it's at least better than what I had before. I, I don't really care for how it, it comes up and then goes back down like this. I would rather have like a landing right here in this area that goes off that way, goes down into my base and comes up, but I would have to move the stairs back further into my base and I really don't want to do that. So it works. And then over here, we have this path that now leads over to the other side of the villager trading hall. And I started with some grass over here because the idea for the entire top of my base here, where I have my storage, is that I'm going to build stuff up here. I just haven't done that yet. And this is, I guess, the first thing is this path that leads over there. I also put in some lantern lighting. I don't, I'm not sure if I like it like this right now. Uh, it is what it is for now, and I might change this later on, but it does work, and it's better than just having torch spam. I also built this area as if I'm going to expand the villager trading hall, because I probably will, and I wanted to make sure that I have room, and so I did four blocks in between, and then this is the three blocks like right here. And then there would be two blocks behind it, one where the zombie walks and then the wall behind it. And so this is the extents of it as to where it would come out to, which kind of works out. Um, I'm not going to do anything under here yet until, well, I guess I know where that's going to go. And so maybe I'll just put a wall here that comes straight down. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out eventually, but it is, it's at least better than it was. I can walk along here without having to worry about falling off the back of it, which I did quite often before. And it now wraps around over to here. So that's it. That's all I've done. And that's all I have time for in this episode. I'm pretty happy with the sugarcane farm. Hopefully this will produce enough sugarcane for us. I don't know how much I'm going to actually need. I'll find that out once I, once I actually start making rockets. And in the next episode, I'm hoping to make the creeper farm. But as I said, that's all I have time for in this episode. And so if you like it, please leave a like and a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'll see you next time.